for the one millionth time, I do see you guys' requests. So you don't have to keep spamming them in the comment section. I'm going to go over a character that a lot of people don't really go over. It's a mutant known as Bishop. He's actually pretty freaking cool when you really dig deep into his powers. He has similarities to Rogue, but not really. He has, like, the ability to absorb kinetic energy. It can kind of amp his physical strength and stuff like that and his other characteristics. It's not just absorbing kinetic energy and shooting it with energy blasts, although he can do energy blasts as well. He has very high potential, but without absorbing any energy blasts at all, he sh still should be in that super soldier tier because you know how Marvel characters are. Even when they don't have no type of enhanced strength, for some reason they still have super soldier tier strength. But before I go any further, appreciate those that have donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. It really helps out a lot. That rhymed. Bars. You understand you think you're doing the right thing, but you're not. And I don't have time to explain why. Either back off or suffer the consequences. <laughs> And by the way, if this guy does look familiar, it is that same guy that you might have seen in the X-Men live action movie, Days of Future Past. He was in there briefly. Yeah, this guy actually managed to make it into live action. Hopefully we see him again soon. This dude, Bishop, had a jacked up life. He's from a future timeline. In that timeline, in that particular timeline, you know how comics like to have these alternate timelines that don't eventually end up happening, right? It makes for interesting storytelling, don't lie. There was a single mutant that caused the deaths of a huge number of people. In response, humans genetically marked mutants with the letter M. That's why you see the letter M on his face here. No, I wasn't lying. Humans genetically marked mutants with an M on their face and placed them in guarded concentration camps. This is actually where Bishop was raised, so yeah, he had a pretty jacked up life. But fun fact, he ends up eventually growing up to be a mutant police officer who focused on tracking down and stopping evil mutants. While tracking an evil mutant, this guy named Trevor, Bishop actually traveled through time, actually encountered, fought alongside, and ended up joining the X-Men, right? X-Men, my favorite organization, by the way, by the time of me making this video. Ended up being at odds with the X-Men because Bishop ended up believing that Hope Summers was the mutant who's actually led the, to the concentration camps that he had to deal with and he decided uh she's got to go like dang bishop you gonna do this to a girl i mean god dang he became so obsessed with her death he actually turned on the x-man tracked her down no matter what future or timeline she is he even got down such a dark path he was willing to wipe out whole continents but all of this ends up working out all this mumbo jumbo he ends up joining the x-men again hope ended up surviving bishop eventually returned to the x-men's time with messed up memories and a desire to do good once again right of course he can't stay bad the whole time right I literally mentioned this a second ago, but his powers are absorbing energy and it can redirect it as powerful blasts. Bishop can also convert the same energy to different types and he uses it to enhance his strength and durability. So he kind of can change tiers. I mean, when you fight a person, don't you exert kinetic energy when you try to punch him? So it's like, no matter what you do, he's going to change tiers if you fight him or punch him. You know, it just makes sense. See, in this scan, for example, absorbs energy and redirects it, blasts it backwards, right? Green energy here, states here channels energy when he absorbs it he gains a measure of invulnerability and he also becomes very very strong the harder rolling thunder hits him with her force blast the more powerful he becomes pretty much end of story that's the example right there you're probably wondering like if he can absorb energy and stuff why does he hold a gun well he's one of those guys i guess that's old school that still wants to use freaking guns and stuff because they're kind of cool don't you agree standard gear he mainly uses the guns when he can't rely on absorbing energy I absorb every channel of energy. Energy is not something I have a lot to spare at this moment. You know what I mean? He uses various firearms. It's cool seeing him shoot guns here and there. He often has various knives as part of his equipment. Has a small concealed gun in his sheath. Yeah, he's getting strangled by apocalypse here. And this gun does pack a punch. <laughs> that was the one time he blew up a car with his gun. I'm a big fan of shotguns, don't judge me. Using handguns to blow apart a platform. Of course you can't be an X-Men person and not fight Mr. Sinister. Blows a hole in Mr. Sinister, but dang, Mr. Sinister's smiling though. Everybody even expresses their interest on, dang, how many guns this dude carries? They say he's a policeman. Oh, by the way, he does have a cybernetic arm. He lost his arm, don't, don't ask. Got his arm taken off by a Predator X. So he stole a nuclear powered arm from Ford, somebody that builds a lot of cool stuff. It's kind of broken, like it literally has a time machine built in it like what kind of arm is this he just got an arm like this laying around he has fought cable before he has tentacles strong enough in the arm to hold down cable it can even tear the heart out of an opponent and break necks it's very handy because this arm can even power his energy attacks very handy it's easy to forget how powerful bishop is he so rarely uses his powers so where is he getting the energy ah the mechanical arm they say the cybernetic arm is even strong enough to smash a man into the wall dang he did the only real limitation is that one of his guns that he uses can't damage somebody like 
Emma Frost in her diamond form, which makes sense. She should be bulletproof in this state, right? Here and there from time to time again, he might get these like specialty weapons. I wouldn't necessarily call these standard gear, but he has some other stuff that he has. I'm just going to show them to you right quick without babbling too much. Like nanites he can deploy from his arm to, it pretty much disables mutants. It's like a nanite, a weapon is a nanite virus I concealed in a compartment in my arm. They said the virus is non-lethal unable to survive in the open air for more than five minutes. He even has like these nanite bombs against strife. He has overpowered gear. Colossus threw a punch at him. He catches him off guard by putting power dampening cuffs on him in this occasion. This is some broken gear, yo. He has some really good body armor to protect himself against mutant or strong attacks. He has PSI shield. He has a stealth ship that's impervious to modern technology. His stuff is advanced. And by the way, he's even used a motorcycle. One thing people seem to underestimate about mutants, I don't know how many times I have to say this, but is their actual fighting skills. Yes, he has superpowers, but he still has fighting skills. This might be a bit shocking, but it's true. Oh, by the way, this is what I was talking about earlier when he loses his arm, Predator X. Even though he got his arm taken off, he's still able to function and fight. This is the whole reason for him stealing a cybernetic arm. That's why I say he has super soldier tier strength. It's like normal humans still seem super weak to him, like handles these couple of thugs with ease. No using kinetic energy, I would say, right? Hard to tell if he is or not. He could be using kinetic energy power, but we don't, you know, I guess every single comic, he's not going to state, hey, everybody, I'm using kinetic energy right now. You know, every comic don't have to spoon feed us that every time. So he could be using it, but could not. But I'm thinking he's not here. He's so skilled. He was like in this extraterrestrial prison. Like he's literally in a prison with like alien looking people. Gets jumped by these alien looking creatures. Still handles these attackers with skills. See the way he moves? This is definitely skill and precision. He was like in this hole, this bladed hole, as you can see. Like, how do you fight somebody with all these spikes on them? It's hard to counter them. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to be real discreet. Counters them anyway. Shows really deep skill and degree. There was this guy that had a gun to their head. Takes them out before they can even react or even pull the trigger that quick. He even react to a partner's sneak attack. He literally used a nerve pinch to knock somebody out instantaneously. Gotta be a martial artist to know this type of stuff. He's even skilled enough to ambush all these armored soldiers and literally takes them all out. He's that skilled. It's a lot of work that's going on here. Dodge. Hit, hit, hit combos. You know what I mean? I love these type of sessions. Man, the myth, the legend. He has sparred with Wolverine himself. Does pretty well against Wolverine. One of the best fighters just in Marvel, period. Not to mention he has insane amount of fighting experience. You know what I mean? Wolverine is no slouch in that category. Weapon skills, he's no slouch either. Duh. I mean, already showed you how he uses guns and stuff, right? This little small stuff like this you don't pay attention to. While he's falling, he's able to hit stuff while in the middle of falling. Then shoots the grappling hook to safety you know stuff like this i love seeing him and wolverine tag team and my boy wolverine my favorite mutant by the way at the time me making this vid they just clean house seems to have skills with a sniper rifle like sniping down an alien fighter craft i'm just saying so he's on the blackbird and just shooting stuff shooting obstacles and stuff while he's on top of the blackbird Sabretooth tries to capture xavier but Bishop's aim says, nah, my aim is really good. I can hit you even though you got Professor in front of me. He seems to be able to analyze stuff in the heat of battle, like in the standoff, targets the enemy. Like he hit the teleporter, which is smart. There was these fast moving drones, used these discs, razor blades to take him out that quick. He's just got accuracy. He can get headshots with thrown knives. He got some decent prep time because he knows how to fight or take on the X-Men because of his future insight. I mean, he's kind of a step ahead of everybody. That's what happens when you're from the future. He's one of those guys, he's really self-aware. It's hard to sneak up on him. The occasion with Storm trying to be silent, Bishop was able to figure it out. He literally instantly realized somebody was in his room. This is how you gotta be when you're like in a world with superpowered people. You always gotta be on your toes. This is the thing about Bishop's fighting style. He uses his firearms in case somebody doesn't conveniently come up to him first and punch him or shoots him or something so he has to have a way of means to defend himself that's why i say he's more than likely in the super soldier tier this way and then he uses an energy blast later you know what i mean he kind of can bait somebody up and like shoot him and miss on purpose just to have them shoot him with something and, and then like they can shoot him and thinking they're going to take him out not knowing his powers and then he can be like bam you just gave me energy to take you out <laughs> But if he does work with somebody, the smart strategy is to have somebody charge him up. I mean, that's the point of teamwork, right? And they know his power. They're going to be like, hey, you're an energy projector. Just shoot me so I can project some energy. You know what I mean? Stay here. Charge me up. That's the cool thing about Bishop. I mean, think about all the different energy manipulators like Solid, for example. This is a really good example of his skill. I remember when he first encountered the X-Men, he kind of like got in a skirmish with the entire X-Men. Storm, Iceman, stuff like that. 
It kind of shows some of his earlier with Colossus. He kind of cheated with the power dampening stuff. So yeah, that's another reason why he's so deadly having this type of tech. The biggest mistake is that they didn't know his power. So this kind of worked to his advantage when they blasted him with the energy. You know what I mean? It's a cool skirmish. No real winners though. You know what I mean? Something cool to watch. This is being known as Mount Joy, a being that had the powers of Psylocke, Gambit, and even freaking Archangel. Does a really freaking job, might I add, quite a bit. Yeah, Bishop ain't playing no games against Mount Joy. He's that freaking strong. Epic. My bad. I haven't even got to the attack power stuff. It just kind of happened. You know what I mean? All right, let me stop messing around. How is his energy projection? Let's show some energy projection, energy absorption stuff. You know what I mean? Let's get it. Get some more lore. The way his powers work here. Apocalypse was explaining it the best way I would say. He has the mutant ability to absorb an extensive range of energies, kinetic, electrical, even temporal. So yeah, he can absorb a variety of form of energy, kinetic, electrical, you know what I mean? He's just very versatile. He can even absorb multiple energy signatures at once. It states here, what is your limit regarding to the number of energy signatures you can absorb at one time? It's crazy, right? Now we're getting into the absurd feats. What's his limit on how much energy he can absorb? Well, he did absorb a ridiculously powerful energy absorption blast from Onslaught. You remember Onslaught, right? I got a video about how strong this guy is. Well, he's basically a bare bones minimum Sky Father tier being. That's lowballing him, calling him a Sky Father. He literally has the mutant abilities of a fusion of a multiple different characters like Professor X, Magneto. He has psionic energy abilities. He even has the power of Franklin freaking Richards and Nick Gray inside of him. Franklin Richards is already like a multi-universal level threat and has that level of blast power. Like Franklin Richards is inside of this man. He... Ate an energy attack from this guy. Correction, he didn't eat an energy attack from this guy. He kind of got messed up, but yeah. Still, gives you an idea of what his limit is. I mean, he had multiple mutants' powers inside of him, but let me just give you a reference on how strong uh, Franklin is right fast. Uh, Franklin was more powerful than Mephisto, by the way. Yeah, but uh, I don't want to make it seem like I'm overhyping Bishop because absorbing this blast did KO Bishop. Like, So yeah, he can't be overloaded, but that's how a very God-tier being it took to overload him. So this same blast that Bishop absorbed, Onslaught stated, impossible. That was enough cyan energy to stop a thousand mutants, yet you live. So he was surprised he even was able to live from that. He got knocked out though, but that's still insane. He says he can evidently absorb energy of what? Telepathic intrusions? So what this means is if somebody psionically is trying to get in somebody's mind, like Bishop can like be standing in the vicinity and say, oh no, I'm just going to absorb that energy so you're not going to be able to go in their mind. Like, wait, what? So he's like an ultimate counter for somebody like maybe Professor X or Martian Manhunter. Like they could use their psionic ability. I mean, because it still is a form of energy. They're like telepathic abilities. So I guess he can like be standing in the vicinity and kind of absorb their energy and stop them from intruding in somebody's mind, I guess. Right? If I'm perceiving that right, what do you guys think? Because in this panel, that appears to be what's happening here. Don't even try to read my mind. Like he can stop reading minds. But I guess he can only do this for himself. He can't just counter somebody else trying to get invaded in their mind right okay now that makes sense he even absorbed the energy of the living monolith who was powered by multiple mutants he absorbs any and all energies right her there's this time he absorbed enough energy to stop a tank raw power absorbing energy is just light work to him he says my mutant ability does not include an on off switch which means it's like his power is always on so it's like if you're shooting energy at him he does not choose to whether say oh i'm not going to absorb it this time no he's just going to absorb it like no matter what he states here i automatically absorb my energy directed at me channeling it through me it's like auto this kind of means if he was sleeping i guess you couldn't because it's always on right you can't just blast him in his sleep you know you can't beat him with energy unless you just overload him like onslaught or something but you know what i'm saying it's implied that all the energy blasts kind of like swerve to him, to his body. If there's a super overpowered being known as Legion. I might do a video about him later, but I don't know yet. What's this energy that Bishop absorbed? He states here, hurry while Bishop still retains some of David's chronal energy. They was able to use the energy Bishop absorbed to kind of piggyback off Legion and off his time jump. He talks about the time he was collecting kinetic energy from the snow hitting him. Are you kidding me, dude? Do you know how many snow drops you'd have to absorb to even amount to anything? You're probably like, man, this guy sounds invincible. Well, it's implied you can't harm him with piercing stuff for the most part. There was a time he was getting punched up in this occasion. Used the energy that was punching him to break out. Characters like Gambit, he might actually have Gambit's number. Like him shooting energy blast at him. He can absorb Gambit and Cyclops kinetic energy. 
Power me up, baby. Now, when it comes to super top tier beings, Legion is debatably could be like in the abstract tiers too, depending on how you look at it. Skyfather tiers. Legion's like a super duper overpowered mutant. Like, this is one of the rare cases like he really couldn't siphon off this energy, but that's freaking Legion for his. And it seems like he can't use too much of his energy or he'll eventually pass out. All that was just energy absorption, but I didn't really talk about his energy redirection. I showed like here and there, little glimpses. But before I get to that, what about his strength? I would say he's in the Captain America ranges normally without using his cybernetic arm or no kinetic energy enhancements. But he can eventually jump way out of that tier quickly. For example, in this one occasion, he was like literally able to use a tree as a club, like basically a weapon. So that's freaking stupid strong. Like there was this large container of liquid nitrogen. He threw it in the air like that. You know what I mean? But some of these occasions could be him enhancing himself with his energy. They don't, they're not going to explain it every time he uses his power, right? Grabbed a crashing car in the air with his raw strength. In one of his many adventures, he helped out Storm in their many fights. He lifted up this giant mech off of them with his strength. Lifts this stone pillar. Punching power seems pretty cool. He literally punched through a wall and ripped out cables while he was running. Kinetic energy. It seems like he was using his power here. He even pulled Wolverine and Nightcrawler to safety in this one occasion. This is more impressive than you think. Beast, yeah, you know, Beast had different modes. You know, human mode and blue form. You know, he broke Beast's hold in this occasion. Like, literally breaking out the master lock. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me stop. He has some pretty decent attack power. There was this giant alkalite. He punched him. Boom. Punches this large mutate out the roof of a train with his attack power. Punching power. He's no stranger to the fighting experience. Look at this guy. Literally punched out a giant Shi'ar assassin. Tears down a danger room robot with his bare hands. Fought characters like Gambit. Sent him flying. Ragdolls a few soldiers. Kicking literally the doors off their hinges. Energy right there. As you can see. He can even crack a wall with a punch. He's durable enough to withstand punches from Colossus. By the way, energy t attacks can cause him a bit of pain, but they benefit more than negative, right? He got hit with a rocket and he seemed fine. This guy even withstood a big flame blast. Now, I will admit, I won't necessarily say he's in the Hulk and Thor tier, even with the energy absorption, but he can take a lot, though. It helps him be able to hang in there for a little while, you know, against the heavy, heavy hitters. But that's freaking juggernaut for you, though. I didn't really go into speed much, but yeah, it's just a standard speed, massively supersonic, way past supersonic. Should be compared to the super soldiers in this verse at least, or way higher with energy absorption. His speed should get faster, like he was held up by a gun. He was fast enough to incapacitate them very quickly. He looked kind of fresh in that outfit, though. They're very quick. As soon as they were free from captivity, they completely blitzed the people that was guarding them. Light work. Like, look how many they took out. I mean, if he was slow and he wasn't comparable to super soldier tiers, he wouldn't even be able to keep up with characters like Gambit. Gambit has got speed comparable to Captain America level characters. And I've already went over how fast the Super Soldier tiers in this verse are like Captain America and Daredevil. And how they're literally confirmed to have microsecond combat speed. This is rather intently made for Marvel Super Soldier tiers because it's consistent with Captain America being able to dodge bullets. Yeah, Captain America. And if you need more proof of these Super Soldier tiers being able to casually dodge bullets and have microsecond reaction time, then check out my other Super Soldier tier videos like Black Panther, for example. Characters like Black Panther, yeah, even Hawkeye, stated here, the following microsecond with nerve-shattering suddenness. He died something thrown by the Hulk in a microsecond. It's consistent in Marvel, guys. That means Bishop has comparable speed to characters like Captain America and Gambit. Black Panther and even Hawkeye, who has no powers, by the way. Hawkeye has no powers. He's still this fast. That lets you know the standard benchmark for characters in Marvel. Which means Bishop should have reactions in the microsecond, which is one millionth of a second. What if I told you he actually absorbed Sue Storm's force field and blasting Onslaught in the process? But it didn't really hurt Onslaught. He was just acting weaker to, tr to troll him. You can blast Bishop, but he can throw it back double hard. There's this Fury android, right? Probably one of his better feats confirmed. He's kind of close to that star ranges of power. It was stated the creature was channeling the output of a small star. Star level confirmed? I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you got to remember, he actually was able to KO a weakened juggernaut. Yeah, he was weakened. You know, he was real weakened because he just got beat up by uh, Owen Slot. So, use the electrical grid to do so. Do I believe he could be juggernaut in a straight slug fast? About 99% not. Still cool showing. But he's strong enough to KO Sabretooth, though. He has plenty of cases in a fighting cable. I'm just saying. But, guys, that's just, just about when to do it. But to wrap things up with Bishop, what do I think he ranks? I would say he's easily in the medium heavyweight tier, star level tier if he absorbs enough energy. Not on the par with characters like Onslaught. He, I don't even think he's quite there with characters like the Hulk and Thor, that range. But his energy absorption really makes him versatile and can make him be a helpful asset in fighting big level threats. If Marvel decided to do more with him in the future, who knows what the future holds for him. One can say he could be black hole level, but he's definitely in them star ranges when he absorbs enough energy for sure. 
He's proved to be on more than one occasion comparable to characters like Cable in physical strength, just raw physical strength. Don't forget that Cable has literally knocked out Captain America himself before, physically. Let's not forget that Cable has guns that can be an annoyance to Hulk-like tears. Just saying. That's something. Cable is literally never at his full potential, but it's stated at his full potential. Without that little virus, he'll be able to extinguish the star. This kind of lines up with Bishop being star level two. You know what I mean? He's always fighting Cable. You know what I mean? That type of stuff. Full potential. He evidently shattered the board of the freaking Silver Surfer. And full potential Cable fought, evidently fought evenly with Apocalypse himself. And I got a video about Apocalypse, by the way. Bishop has shown to be able to damage characters like Beast, who are at least in the probably close to the spider man is symbiote tier. And he messed up Gambit pretty bad in this occasion. There was this time Bishop nearly overpowered this being known as Stripes Force Field, who is literally an insane clone of the mutant known as Cable. <laughs> to further prove that he's on Cable's level. I mean, for Pete's sake, he kinda one-shotted Rogue, I'm just saying. He's basically a full potential Cable, yet he nearly overpowered Stripe's force field. Yeah, this occasion I brought up earlier, this is the occasion of him nearly overpowering his force field. So that's a big feat for him, full potential Cable, basically. So Bishop is no joke, and I think we all can agree with that. But yeah, I definitely think he's in the medium heavyweight tiers at least. Uh, he could be in the black hole ranges too with the heavy, heavy hitters, but he's not consistently portrayed on that level, I would say. But what do you guys think? You think there's more future or potential for Bishop? What do you guys think? How strong do you think Bishop is? I think he's in the star level ranges easy. Could be in the black hole ranges too. But there's a lot of factors to be considered. What do you guys think? Post your comments down below. I do see your request. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this presentation. And respect Bishop.